I recently made a short film called Bombs Away that you can watch right now, right here on YouTube. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out now. It's less than eight minutes long and features a tour de force performance from my blue healer, Marty. The video you're watching now is one in a series of videos about how this project came together from start to finish. Today, we're talking cameras, we're talking gear, it's production. So I'm gonna talk through the equipment we used, but I hope you'll stick around to hear what I have to say that isn't just about the gear. This was a very DIY project. In fact, most of it ended up being a DIM project. Try this, I guess. But even though I did a lot of it myself, I couldn't have done it at all without my good friend Chris, who runs Flink Films up in Madison, Wisconsin. I've worked with Chris a lot over the years, and he's got a great Sony kit we used for what you might technically call principal photography. Like, go like this? Yeah. I hate that. This was a two-person production, and even that is kind of pushing it a little because I was going to be acting on camera. So basically, it was all up to Chris to film me. Because of that, we went with his Sony FX3 and Tamron 35-150. to We just ran up to the parking lot. It's, it's lunchtime. That Tamron lens is super impressive, and I don't think we needed to change it out for any other lens throughout the production. At the end of the lens, he ran a matte box with ND and polarizing filters. I wanted to shoot almost everything on a tripod, so we used my Sackler Flowtech tripod with the Active 6 fluid head. I wanted to use a tripod because I tend to work on a lot of run and gun productions where we're shooting a lot handheld or on a gimbal because we don't have a lot of time to get coverage. And for this project, I wanted to enforce some deliberation in our compositions and only use camera movement when the scene called for it. When all you've got is a gimbal hammer, every shot becomes a gimbal nail. Good boy. We also used Chris's Sony FS5 on a hood mount to record through the windshield of my car for a couple of driving shots. That works really well in this kind of situation for a few reasons. The biggest is that it doesn't have internal image stabilization, which can ruin your footage when mounting cameras to cars. It's also got internal ND filters, and because it's kind of an old, outclassed camera at this point, it wouldn't be the end of the world if it took a tumble off a car. Although I am talking about somebody else's camera here, so. Take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> You're not supposed to see the red line there, so this one was not suctioned enough. <laughs> well. <laughs> Unfortunately, none of those shots ended up making it into the final cut, even though it is one of my favorite setups we've filmed. And that's the same with another great setup. Chris rigged out his truck with his chase camera setup, which is very cool. I scrapped all those shots too, because the weather conditions just didn't cooperate. We shot everything on location, as you might imagine for a scrappy production like this. I wrote this script knowing what we had available to us, which was a parking lot, the sidewalk, the park, and my living room. Lots of exterior locations that we would need to rely on natural light for. And this made the production subject to nature, which was, uh, you know, a little bit difficult to deal with and perhaps a mistake in retrospect. For the next one, I think I'd prefer to film in a location that is entirely within our control for lighting. But shooting it this way, using available light, allowed us to move fast, and the weather conditions mostly cooperated to provide a nice, soft, even light, at least on day one, which was a blizzard. And it looked amazing, but also locked us into those weather conditions for any pickups we would have down the line. It also meant Chris had to stand in the parking lot with two umbrellas while I got to sit in my cozy car as a diva actor. I have my diaper on too. <laughs> so we wrap on day one, happy with how things went, wake up in the morning and uh, it was completely clear and incredibly sunny. Oh, there's a cool light leak coming in through. Tilt your head forward. Yeah. Oh, there it is, yeah. That, along with the complication of being kicked out of both our plan A and plan B locations, meant that nothing we got that day ended up being usable. And then Chris had to head back to Wisconsin. We're doing some on the fly adjustments to how we're filming it. Uh, we got kicked out of a parking ramp. What's up? Oh, okay. Which was already our plan C parking lot. And so, we're back at a different parking lot and making some 
quick on the fly adjustments to the script to make it seem plausible that we're filming in the middle of the day. I'm doing a costume change. This is uh, a little ridiculous. But the good thing about casting myself in the lead role and having my own camera meant that I am always available when I'm available. For pickups, I used my Canon C70. And I didn't worry about matching cameras at all throughout production because I knew I could make any of these work with any other in Resolve. I made a whole video about how to match Sony and Canon cameras in Resolve if you're interested. And so as you might imagine, I did rely pretty heavily on pickups for this, running out to get a shot when the weather conditions were right over the next month or so. Filming myself proved to be a bit of a hassle. I don't want to oversell how hard it is, but my brain had a hard time keeping track of composition, mic placement, props, and of course, my performance. I had to shoot one scene about four different times because I kept forgetting one prop or screwing up the framing or not realizing the light was in the shot. The biggest challenge of production though was filming my dog. I just want to shout Marty out how good he's being here on the bench here at the end of the movie. He's a good boy. He's just a good boy. Excellent good boy. You hear that working with children and animals is difficult, and uh, I can believe it. Marty did a great job for all of the active scenes where he's walking around and jumping up on a bench, but my man would not let me film him sleeping on the couch. He got really good at understanding when I was trying to film him relaxing, and he'd get up and harass me about it. I left my camera in the living room for days on end in hopes he'd just get used to it, but he was able to tune into my brain somehow to know exactly when I was recording. I have untold gigabytes of footage of Marty just staring down the camera in hopes that he would eventually go to sleep. I got the perfect shot of my other dog, Nora, doing exactly what I wanted, and I briefly considered reshooting the entire rest of the movie to recast her in that role since Marty just wouldn't chill out on camera. But eventually, I got the shot I needed so we could finally wrap on photography. To record sound, we relied on the help of our good friend, Michael Stanley. Mike, stand for short. Michael is a light stand with a Sennheiser MKH416 and a Rycoat blimp attached to the top and a Zoom F6 clamped to the side. We also had a Countryman B3 lav mic being recorded with a Sennheiser G4 wireless system going into the Zoom F6 as well. We recorded 32-bit audio with the Zoom F6, which helped a lot with moving quickly during production. I'm almost hesitant to talk about how we didn't have anyone to monitor the audio during production because I don't want to encourage that behavior, but it did work out for us. I consider myself to be someone who cares a lot about sound, but I'm now realizing I've spent what feels like 40 minutes talking about Sony cameras and my section on audio is uh, this monstrosity. Our script relied a lot on hearing radio snippets and a variety of mics were used for the VO. I know that some voice actors used a Blue Snowball USB mic, other used a Shure SM58, and one even just recorded a voice memo on his iPhone. Watch for a video coming soon about the work I did in post-production on the sound. So these were the tools I used in this production. Keep your eyes peeled for more behind the scenes content about this project, and if you haven't watched it yet, go see Bombs Away. Thanks for watching. Reports from the UN were particularly grim today as Prospects tempers for resolution of the impasse are looking increasingly dire. It seems dire. that the multilateral talks had completely broken down Frankly, despite I'm the midnight deadline. Frankly, I'm surprised the obstinate brinkmanship from all parties, and it's not clear Utter to destruction me of all life on Earth that political forces seem to be The president to has unleash. announced from an undisclosed location that the final diplomatic efforts to divert Two the weeks multilateral ago, nuclear crisis have occurred. Congress authorized the use of our nuclear arsenal as a final option to deal with this unprecedented aggression against America. Explosions of nuclear devices and collateral explosions in your area are certain. You are advised to seek shelter immediately. Hi, Dad.